Israel yeah, launches lethal strike on Jenin. I love using neutral language uh, like they're cops. You know, when like yeah. police shootings happen, when like police murder someone. Yeah. And they're like, uh, lethal strike was facilitated uh, and, uh, you know, projectile bullets were flying and made contact with uh, uh, a, a person. And it's like, well, what happened there? You know, and it, they're, they're basically talking about it in the same terms whenever they, well, they just talk about it. launched it. it. Yeah. You don't know what. Well, These are the guys says you the operation Connor is focused on for, counter-terrorism. Yeah. Palestinians call it a new war crime against... That's our why they just got their new... They just got their new oh, drones. Yeah. yeah. For defenseless people. The Palestinian Health Ministry says at least eight people have been killed, with that number likely to rise, and at least 50 others now injured. Israel says it hit terrorist infrastructure in the densely populated... <laughs> yeah, Israel always says that, bro. <laughs> that really doesn't mean anything. Okay. What terrorist infrastructure is. Yeah. I mean, they said that when they hit the Associated Press building. The the notion that, like, Israel is hitting uh, terrorist structure is, is just anywhere where there are brown people, Israel considers terrorist structures. After a series of a t Palestinian attacks targeting Israeli, He's doing Israeli military, military saying that they're going into the West Bank to try to prevent militants from from being able to later carry out attacks but it just seems to be perpetuating the cycle of violence and we have been reporting it seemingly time and time again about how everything we're seeing is once again reminiscent of the days of the second intifada when israeli tanks were seen in the actual cities themselves in the in the west bank but really today is something new because it's been confirmed now from an israeli military source telling cnn that this is the largest israeli military operation in the west bank since 2002 when you look at just the, f the full number of soldiers, uh, hundreds of, so of Israeli soldiers. The fact that they were using airstrikes from drones, we know of at least 10 airstrikes. It's wild saying like cycle of violence and shit because like in, in every sense of the word, it's like going to a kindergarten and slaughtering them with an AR-15 and you're like fully kitted out, okay? And then the kindergartners throw rocks at you and retaliation in the cycle of violence. Now, some of you might say, whoa, wow, Hassan. Palestinians are fully grown adults and human beings. Like, how dare you rid them of autonomy and treat them like they're kindergartners? No, literally. Some of the fucking kids, a lot of them, are kindergartners that are getting fucking blown to bits. Because in Gaza, and even in the West Bank now, anywhere where there are uh, Palestinians that remain, their average age is insanely low. Care to wonder, do you guys want to know why that is the case? And most importantly, this used to be Gaza, okay? The world's largest open-air prison where I, I forget what the average age is, but um, they've already massacred the, the uh, able-bodied men. So, of course, what remains are fucking children. Now they're doing it in Occupied West Bank. I'm old enough to remember that Occupied West Bank and the uh, encroachment in the form of settler colonial terrorism was actually seen as an objectively evil thing that Israel was not even openly advocating for, but even in some in instances, openly saying that it was wrong. Do you remember that? Back in the day, they would be like, oh, these bulldozers, I mean, I don't know how they got there, but like, of course, we would never supply infrastructural and military support to them to very quickly being like, oh no, we're making uh, the entirety of West Bank into a, a parking lot where we are purposely, strategically blowing through Palestinian neighborhoods in an effort to set up additional checkpoints in between them and make lives completely unhabitable for Palestinians living on Palestinian soil that Israel has no fucking business being uh, there. I mean, they don't have any business being in the entirety of fucking Palestine, but let's be real, uh, especially so even from like the most liberal progressive perspective, right? And yet here we are. The, the median age in Gaza is 18 and the West Bank median age is 21.9. Any kind of coverage on this matter that doesn't reflect the reality that I just described to you, which is an apartheid regime with the express purpose of creating an, like a religious ethno state, uh, a theocratic uh, ethno state. Anyone that does not explain it on such terms is lying to you. They're whitewashing genocide. Western media is absolutely uh, doing this. 100%. They called it a military operation. This is how Russia talks about Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's just a military speak, operation. Still getting reports. Except Israel is like significantly more successful than than Russia is. Let's be real, because Ukraine is backed by the Western powers. Israel also backed by the Western powers. Uh, in a in a conflict like this, the party that is backed by uh, Western powers is always going to have some level of upper hand. I mean, in in the Ukraine situation, at least it's like even the playing field. 
uh, I think, in a serious way. But in the Israel-Palestine uh, situation, it's just like incredible. You're using the most advanced weapons on people who literally don't have water or their water supply is completely controlled by the people using the advanced military war machine. Now, we are hearing that at least eight Palestinians have been killed. There have been some reports that some of them at least are militants, but no militant group has claimed them yet as their own. We know of at least 50 who have been injured. One Israeli soldier uh, has been injured as well. What happened? Did one of the IDF guys stub their toe? Yeah, they got to be pretty incompetent to get injured in this situation. It's like we talked about the American war machine in Iraq and Afghanistan. If there's one group of, of uh, occupying forces that are directly doing even worse kinds of warfare, like disproportionate use of uh, force against uh, uh, enemy combatants that are literally civilians with nothing, it's the Israeli occupying force against random Palestinian 14-year-olds, okay? <laughs> Tripped over a dangerous rock. It's like, dude... You are one of the most geared occupying force on the planet. It would literally be like, no, it'd be like if the American militarized police force was like literally going into a kindergarten and just like slaughtering everyone. Okay. They would like drive the fucking APC. I feel like, I feel like I can already spot some terrorist infrastructure though. I don't think this is this picture. Those lights. Probably yeah. Like super high voltage. Well, could... the lights are there so that the terrorists can spot the, um, the, the big, beautiful, brave IDF vegan yep. soldiers. <laughs> From afar and then take pot shots with a sniper rifle. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of infrastructure here that's dangerous. I would go so far as to say that, like, even in fucking Yemen, uh, the the rebel groups are funded better by Iranian uh, partisans than uh, against the Saudi genocide uh, than the Palestinians are against Israel because, like, they're completely controlled. You know what I mean? Like, their access is just absolutely diminished. Yeah. And most of the world sees that as a genocide, right? Because it's being conducted by the Saudis. I have what it might be a stupid question. I can never find an answer for this question for most leftists even, but why is this classified as a genocide when the Palestinian population is rising? The reason why people don't answer you when you say that is because that's like literally very common genocide denial from what the Nazis did uh, when, when talking about the Holocaust. I just gave you the average number, the average age of the uh, Palestinian population. Also, the Palestinian population numbers rising uh, uh, in comparison to what? Like, why do you think the median age is, is 21 and 18? What do you think happened? They just all have this, like, uh, unique genetic condition. They just die. They just magically cease to perish. There's a unique genetic condition. It's called uh, not having clean water or electricity and being bombed all the time. That's how it goes, I think. Yeah, they all got vaccinated. Oh, wait, no. Israel is based. <laughs> they were super pro-vaccine for the Israelis and super anti-vaccine for the Palestinians. They were they were based anti-vaxxers uh, against Palestinians, dude. <laughs> so they wouldn't even let them have the vaccine because they didn't want them to get uh, autism, gay autism. Norda is a political analyst and a former spokesperson for the Palestinian Authority, and she joins me now live from Ramallah in the West Bank. Well, I can tell you that journalists have been struggling to uh, cover the story on the ground. They, uh, uh, they've come under direct fire uh, themselves. Um, um, the uh, medical crews, as you reported, have also had uh, a lot of difficulty accessing the refugee camp and retrieving the injured or uh, attending to those who need help, including the elderly and the civilians trapped uh, in the refugee camp during this operation, which is going on almost uh, 16 hours now. It is um, an operation. And, and it's really a lot good. of uh, former colleagues who like identical covered, language. Uh, who had covered, oh yeah, the Palestinian yeah. special military operation. <laughs> Palestinian Authority, by the way. Yeah, no wonder fucking people in the West Bank hate these motherfuckers, dude. Yeah, they're just doing operation right now. Um, thanks, thanks, former Palestinian Authority political. This is the pro-Palestine <laughs> guy that they have on CNN. <laughs> they're doing a military operation on the dogs, the rabid dogs that were living there. I mean, it's totally uh, worthy and worthwhile. I mean, it's a really small area, you know. I get it. These these uh, these awful people. They're using uh, meat shields, human shields covered the 2002 invasion of the refugee camp say the atmosphere is very reminiscent of that bloody episode when Israel killed over 60 Palestinians and basically pummeled the refugee camp, destroyed it, leveled many of its neighborhood, uh, neighborhoods to the ground, um, also under the very similar pretenses. Yeah, refugee camp, not sure how that works when they are Palestinians in their own country. Maybe concentration camp is more precise. Hmm. You know. Uh, relegating them to ghettos, 
you know, seems like that's what is happening. But yeah, it is. That is precisely what it is. Yeah. And if you say, well, they have freedom of travel, how dare you say that? No, the fuck they don't, as a matter of fact. They quite literally do not. They are actively greenwashing already. The saga of Israeli water management is one of the most inspiring stories of the last 75 years. Israel went from having serious water problem to being a net water exporter to neighboring countries. Meanwhile, the population grew from 1 million to well over 9 million. 97% of Gaza's water is undrinkable. Like everything else about Israel, the displacement and murder of Palestinians is the reality that this greenwashing attempts to obscure. They have so much water, they're giving it to neighbors, dude. Except, you know, not the people that used to live there that you displaced and kill all the time. Insane. But again, they're based. They don't want the, the gay turning water. Palestinians, they want Palestinians to not turn gay uh, with the water. Oh, That's yeah, what it is. Yeah, That's yeah. why they deny them the vaccines. That's water. why they deny them uh, modern medicine. That's why they deny them uh, water. They deny Palestinians electricity so that they are not like mind melted, brainwashed by TikToks. Um, you know, it's hard to get access to the Internet. Well, let me try to visualize this for the viewers. Basically, uh, a, a large contingent of Israeli armored vehicles have uh, gotten into the refugee camp. They basically plowed many of the streets. They destroyed the water network, cut off electricity. So the residents not, I mean, she's right. And no she's not as bad as no I thought she was going to be. And nowhere to go. And many of the buildings have been taken over by Israeli soldiers to be used as sniper positions. So those who were, who have had the misfortune of Israeli soldiers taking over their home are now trapped in those homes. And I want to put this in perspective, if you, if you allow me. Uh, for Palestinians, these horrible scenes are part of a very, of a bigger um, and, and very violent picture of daily life under Israeli occupation. The Palestinians are um, uh, ruled against their will by the Israelis. And in order to maintain that rule, which is violent in its nature, Israel conducts these campaigns against Palestinian resistance, mm -hmm. which exists because the occupation is, exists. I as you know, you, your reporter was reporting out of Ukraine a few moments ago and was talking about efforts to combat uh, occupation there. Um, it's pretty much the same when it comes to Palestinians. I, I do. Unfortunately, the international reaction is very different. Uh, and I want our reporting says that the United that States uh, yeah. Biden administration is watching the situation closely, but it continues Maybe to hold the line, saying that look, uh, <laughs> Israel is entitled to safeguard its security. I also want to get to. Oh my God, dude! Oh my God! You cannot say that, dude. The situation is equivalent to, like I said, a bunch of fucking military like hopped up psychopathic reactionary cops walking into a fucking kindergarten or just driving an armored personnel carrier to the wall of a kindergarten and then slaughtering all the fucking children in there. You don't turn around and go, well, what about the cops right to defend themselves? They have a right to safeguard themselves. It's like, you can't do that. That's an insane fucking take. I also want to get to those calls from Hamas and Islamic Jihad to, in their words, yeah, what about Hamas and Islamic Jihad? Okay, what about them, dude? What what do you want? What do they have? What does what does the Palestinian person have? What what do they have for any kind of like even crumb of emancipation? Everyone always like Islamic Jihad and Hamas. First of all, Hamas also an Israeli slash American counterbalance to the more Marxist, more uh, tolerant uh, revolutionary, still armed uh, revolutionary groups that originally were profoundly popular, but you butchered them. So now there's only the fundamentalists left. And, you know, they're the only ones who are rising up in arms to defend themselves. What are you supposed to do? Every American loves fantasizing about how if some motherfucker came to my house, or some perverts came to my house and like try to fuck my wife, like I'd have my AR-15 and I'd shoot that fucker dead. You know what I mean? I'm, I have a right to defend myself. But like when it comes down to it, no Palestinian has a right to defend themselves against a brutal occupying force, okay? You can't do that. They're always like, nope, not like that. Don't do that. What about Hamas? What about Hamas? It's like, what, what, what do they have? They have nothing. They have nothing. Half the time when we talk about fucking rocket fire from Gaza into Israel, right? The worthy people, the people that are actually being uh, blown away that uh, people should care about, right? Every single time they talk about Hamas, where do they get the rockets from? Where? How are they making the rockets? They're making it with projectiles that Israel threw into Gaza. It's not like they got fucking rocket scientists out there. It's not like they got, you know, a, a litany of, of uh, natural resources to build from. It's not like they have a steady flow of shit coming into fucking Gaza. They're literally making handmade rockets off of the fucking rockets that you shot down into Gaza. 
And all of those rockets are ultimately intercepted. Almost all of them are intercepted. You know how? Because I'm a taxpaying U.S. citizen and I pay for the Iron Dome. So like I literally have already, I'm already defending Israel every goddamn day with my taxes, okay? I have uh, uh, time and time again said we should sell to both sides. Like if Israel gets an Iron Dome, Palestine across the board, okay? Palestinians deserve stinger uh, uh stingray missiles or stinger missiles they deserve uh like a howitzer launching system they deserve an iron dome of themselves you double up on the money just give them the iron dome too give them high mars treat it like ukraine you know what i mean fucking bullshit are palestinians just supposed to sit there forever until they're granted rights by an occupying force yeah that's that's exactly right like what are they supposed to do they're like what about hamas what about hamas like yeah i'm sorry that like uh you know the only people that have like uh, an armed form, like a like the only people that are basically the functional government of an open air prison that Israel manages happen to be fundamentalists and are not like woke for you, okay? And by that same logic, like Ukraine doesn't meet that metric either, but you don't give a fuck when you see the black sun on every fucking military patch on Ukrainian soldiers because it doesn't matter because it's like more manageable because they're white. That is a, is an armed emancipation cause that you are on board with. You don't care. What about Russia's right to self-defense? Nazis equals Islamists? No, that's not what I'm saying, man. Shut the fuck up. You're leaping here, okay? I'm stating, first of all, if Nazis equaled Islamists, I'm sure the U.S. media wouldn't have that much of a problem with fucking fundamentalists, okay? It would be like, no, these guys are awesome. <laughs> Yeah, they hated the woke was when the PLO was prominent. No, I already mentioned that. It was like Hamas as an institution is the only form of governance. You can't look at this as a as like, oh, what are their politics in this regard? Oh, what are their personal perspectives here? It's the government, dog. What are you supposed to do? Think about it this way. America shot down the 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 fucking Chinese balloon like a couple months back, okay? Because the some dumbass balloon drifted over US airspace, okay, on accident. Think about that. That's what the government is supposed to do. You're, the government is supposed to protect you, right? So what the fuck is Hamas supposed to do if they're the government? They're supposed to protect you from Israeli missile attacks. They're supposed to retaliate. That's what they're doing. That's the government, dog. That's Of course they're going to do that. Strike Israel by all available means to stop the massacre. Yeah, and their available means are just fucking kites that they put... Uh, like that they put like incendiary, like the little bit of incendiary fuel that they can find on those kites so they can like try to fucking fling the kite over the border wall so it can like drop on crops, dude. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. How devastating, how terrifying. Like if you want to stop Hamas's power or if you want to stop Palestinian attacks, stop fucking making more radicalized babies who are going to understandably want to take up arms against this unlawful, unjust, and cruel apartheid state that's occupying their land. Like, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to fucking grab a gun and defend yourself? It is the most honest, most just, most understandable reaction to watching your fucking baby cousin get blown to bits in her crib, okay? You see that shit? You're not going to be the same ever again. You look at a situation where every single child Every single Palestinian child has PTSD. Every single one. What are they supposed to do? How is it supposed to stop? How is the hurt supposed to stop in any other way? It's not like they can ask kindly. And if they do ask kindly, Israel will go, fuck, man. I just I didn't realize how bad things were. I didn't realize we were sitting in Sidarot Cinema, propping fucking couches on hilltops to watch with binoculars as Israeli snipers snipe down 14-year-olds. I didn't realize that was morally unhinged. Didn't realize that. My bad. I didn't realize that it was fucked up to watch Palestinian babies get blown to fucking bits by U.S.-backed uh, artillery, air support and artillery and all this technology that we are also helping uh, Israel utilize and deploy on unsuspecting Palestinian babies. I didn't realize watching that shit like it was fireworks was actually kind of unhinged, uh, genocidal, bloodthirsty. I didn't realize it was like that. I thought it was kind of tight that we were doing that. Bro acting like Palestinians don't do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, Palestinians do. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so crazy. Yeah, 14-year-old Palestinians uh, fucking uh, deploying missile strikes into uh, uh into different parts of israel it's you know they're always 
they're always just like they're flying the the Palestinian Air Force. Gaza Air Brigade Commander Mahmoud is fucking flying a a, a plane over a, a Tel Aviv and just deploying artillery and and bombs. Also famously backed by the U.S. military, of course. Palestinians have those extremely sophisticated NATO weapons. If a Palestinian ever acquires a NATO weapon, it's because some dumbass Israeli soldier dropped it. Okay, that's the only way they're getting that shit. Let's be fucking real. Yeah, remember when the Palestinian civilians famously sniped an Al Jazeera journalist, like two tapped her on purpose when she was very clearly fucking, when she was very clearly visibly a journalist. Very famous one, as a matter of fact. Remember when nothing happened? Oh, remember when Palestinians also then went in to the funeral proceedings and beat the shit out of the people that were mourning the loss of this famous Al Jazeera journalist? Remember when that happened? Oh, wait, that never happened. It was Israel that did that. And then the American media collectively chose to fucking try and act like that was not a real thing. Yeah, they attacked the fucking casket, dude. The amount of cruelty that Palestinians are subjected to on a daily fucking basis as a normal part of their lives is unimaginable. It's insane. I don't know how else to describe it. It's just unhinged, unimaginable, insane, completely unacceptable. It's disgusting. And the supposed angloid barbarian pedophiles sit there and act like they are uh, so much better than the the subject of uh, their cruelty when they turn a blind eye to this massacre and even have the audacity to turn around and be like, well, these guys are not woke. What are their thoughts on the gays? Hmm. Hmm. You know, it's great, man. Yeah, they deserve to be fucking brutally massacred. Thank you. Yeah, that's always funny when they're like, oh, dude, Palestinians, well, they're not woke. It's like, yeah, there's gay Palestinians too, bitch. They're fucking dying indiscriminately. The Israeli rocket fire too, so. What I was thinking about with respect to, like, Palestinians and their personal politics or whatever is kind of like uh, the the classic liberal position, uh, giving a sh uh, like, not giving a fuck about, like, Alabama, you know what I mean? Or not giving a fuck about, like, West Virginia coal miners. They're like, well, they voted Republican. It's like, okay, well, they don't deserve to die. I don't give a fuck what they're personal ideology is like i still have principles you know what i mean it just blows my mind that we're just like well oh, i don't really like what they're doing i don't really like their policies 